talk about another crucial concept of the chapter but a pretty easy one that is electric power now to understand electric power let us recall from earlier standards what we have understood about power work as well as energy i hope you remember that whenever you apply force on any object which causes it to displace that is what we call as work done and the rate at which this work is done is what we call as power so in general terms we say that the rate of doing work is called as power when it comes to electricity and electric power we say that the rate of doing electric work is called as electric power so we can say electric power can be expressed as the ratio of work done to time and the power that we obtain due to this is called as electric power which is denoted by the letter p work done is denoted by the letter w and time is denoted by the letter t now the unit of power to understand the unit let us just understand one simple thing that whenever you are stuck up in understanding the unit of anything you should always try to recall the formula as you know here the formula is power equals to work done upon time the unit of work done is joule the unit of time is second so ideally the unit of power should be joule per second but on the name of the scientist james watt i hope you remember he invented the steam engine and also give valuable to the concepts of power the unit of power on his name is said to be watt denoted by the letter w as we have been doing so far whenever there is a new unit we have to define the unit as well so the si unit of power is watt and 1 watt can be defined easily from here once again just tell me if the work done is 1 joule and the time is 1 second so 1 upon 1 the answer will be 1 watt so whenever i have to define 1 watt we can say that if the rate at which work is done is 1 joule per second or we can say if 1 joule of work is done per second then the power applied is said to be 1 watt so that is how we can define the si unit of power however for power there are other units as well so the other units of power are kilowatt megawatt and another highly used unit called as horsepower so here we should know the conversion between these different units so first thing kilowatt 1 kilowatt is 10 raised to 3 watts similarly 1 megawatt is 10 raised to 6 watts and 1 horsepower can be expressed as 746 watt so that means whenever you have to convert kilowatt to watt you have to multiply by 10 raised to 3 megawatt to watt you have to multiply by 10 raised to 6 horsepower to watt you have to multiply by 746 and whenever you want to go from watt to any of these units you will have to divide by the corresponding factor so here we understood the concept of power along with its formula units and conversion between other units now that we have derived the general formula of power let us also understand the formula in terms of electric terms before we understand that there are certain formulas which we have studied in the earlier part of the chapter which will help us in understanding the formula for power the formulas are the formula for potential difference v equals to w upon q the formula for electric current i equals to q upon t and the formula for potential difference v equals to i into r as per ohm's law now as we have understood in the earlier part that power can be expressed as work done upon time now if you use the formula above instead of w i can write v multiply by q so we have power equals to v multiply by q upon time t here again instead of q i can write i multiply by t so therefore we have p equals to v into i into t divided by t so t and t gets cancelled and we have power equals to v into i if you just reverse this formula a little bit you get to know that here the formation is vi equal to p 
so this is a shorter way to remember the formula that the formula for power is a vip formula basically v that is potential difference multiplied by i that is current is always equal to p that is power now there are other formulas as well if you use ohm's law as we did in the concept of heating effect of electric current as well just imagine you have a numerical in which they want you to find power and they have given you the values of v and i it becomes very simple to solve because you have this formula now what if you don't have the value of v out here so we can modify the formula we can say that p equals to v into i but instead of v i can write i into r so it will become i into r multiply by i so therefore p equals to i square r is one of the another formula for power so that means if they don't give us potential difference we can go for this formula and if they don't give us resistance then we can go for this formula but what if they don't give us the value of current well for that we should have one more formula so we'll start with this formula once again p equals to v into i and here instead of i using ohm's law i can write v divide by r so therefore we will have p equals to v multiply by v upon r that means p equals to v square upon r that is another formula for power so these are total three formulas of power p equals to v into i p equals to i square into r and p equals to v square upon r with all these formulas the final power that you will obtain will be in terms of watt to convert it in any other unit you will have to use the conversions which we have studied in the earlier part so now we talk about the concept of electrical energy so electrical energy is the energy which we receive at our home from several power companies so that electrical energy can be represented by the letter e and can be expressed as the product of power and time as we know the si unit of power is watt and the si unit of time is second and watt multiplied by second is joule which is the si unit of energy however for electrical energy we have to use a different unit altogether because power is too small to be measured in watt so hence we use the unit of power as kilowatt similarly for time we do not use second but we use hours so because power is measured in kilowatt and time is measured in hour energy then gets measured in kilowatt hour we rather represent it as kwh so therefore we need to understand a clear conversion between kilowatt hour and the si unit of energy that is joule so if someone asks you what is the unit of electrical energy then the answer is the si unit is joule but the commercial energy is kilowatt hour let us now have a good idea about the conversion from kilowatt hour to joule so 1 kilowatt hour is 1 kilowatt multiplied by 1 hour now we know that 1 kilowatt is nothing but 10 raised to 3 watt and 1 hour if converted to the si system that means seconds would be 3600 seconds that is 36 into 10 raised to 2 expressed it in seconds so therefore we will have 36 multiply by 10 raised to 5 watt into second we know that watt into second is nothing but joule and so it is 36 into 10 raised to 5 joule to write it in the standard form we put a point after the first digit so it becomes 3.6 into 10 raised to 6 joule that means if you want to convert from kilowatt hour to joule then the formula is 1 kwh equals to 3.6 into 10 raised to 6 joule just like any other way of conversion if you want to convert from kilowatt hour to joule you multiply by the conversion factor and if you want to convert from joule to kilowatt hour you divide by the same conversion factor so here we understood the concept of electrical energy which we receive at our home its formula and its si unit and commercial unit in most of the numericals we will be using the commercial unit and the relation between commercial and the si unit has also been explained